In this episode of John's Arcade, we're going back to the garage to work on the jump bug. That's right, this is part number four of the Rock Cola jump bug restoration. And in this video, we're going to install a cap kit on the Wells Gardner 4600 and also reflow uh, the headers and all that good stuff. And by the end of this video, we're going to be playing some jump bug. I promise you. <laughs> and then we're going to come back to the table and do some viewer mail. All right, guys, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do a John's Arcade Restore video. That is right, this is actually part number four of the Rockola Jump Bug Restoration. And in this video, we are gonna rebuild, that's right, we're gonna install a cap kit on the Wells Gardner 4600 monitor. Yep, that's right, because right now our jump bug is dead. And that monitor is giving us all kinds of trouble. So in this video, we're gonna go to the garage, we're gonna cap it, we're gonna re replace all the capacitors on the Wells Gardner 4600, we're gonna reflow all the solder on the headers and all that stuff, and then we're gonna plug it in, and my God, by the end of this video, I wanna be playing us some Jump Bug. That is the goal in this video. I wanna play Jump Bug today. <laughs> so anyway, enough of that. Let's just go to the garage, let's get working on that Jump Bug. All right, guys, here's where the jump bug is, and let's quickly review, okay? Because in the last video, in the beginning of the video, the game was playing blind, okay? Our jump bug was playing blind, meaning on the monitor, on the screen, we had a green, like, picture of nothingness, but if we started a game, if we coined up the game, we could hear the game sounds, okay? The game was playing, but we couldn't see anything. And we didn't really know if it was a PCB issue or if it was a monitor issue. So in the last video, we hooked up a brand new HAP Vision Pro monitor and bam, we saw a picture on the screen and we knew right then we had a monitor issue and the game board itself, the PCB and the power supply we installed were all good. So in this video, I hope and pray to fix the original monitor, which is right here. This is a Wells Gardner 4600. This monitor is kind of old school. I've never worked on one of these before, so we're going to be learning this together. And I'll show you guys one thing, because in the last video, we started working on this monitor, and we discovered right away that it had a cracked neck board, okay, right here. And which sucks big time. This is actually pretty common. I've seen this a lot, like on Geo7s and, and 4600s. I guess the operators, when they're moving the games around or whatever, they bang into this thing and they crack it. So we did a neck board swap, because luckily I had a spare 4600 chassis on my shelf. And so we installed a new neck board in the last video. Now I do want to show you guys one thing that I did since the last video, because I didn't realize this when we were doing the video. Um, this red wire, okay, goes to the flyback. This is like the focus wire, okay? It goes to the flyback. It kind of disappears inside the flyback into like the, like the plasticky stuff. Uh, it almost looks like, like epoxy or something. It disappears into that epoxy, and then it comes over to the neck board, okay? And when I first started swapping this, when I looked at it, it didn't look like there was a way to remove this wire, but I didn't realize that this cap pops off, okay? So what I did in the last video is I actually cut this, I spliced it and I put some heat shrink tubing on there. A couple of you guys in the last video said, hey John, you could pop off that plastic cap and make a much better connection to the neck board instead of having the heat shrink tubing, which potentially could be a kind of a risk because there's kind of high voltage going through this wire. And this wire has kind of extra insulation. So since the last video, I popped off this little plastic thing and then I soldered the red wire directly to the neck and now we no longer have that splice. And I think that's just gonna be a way cleaner and safer, really, uh, solution here. So let me put the plastic cap back on, and it just kind of snaps on like so. But to get it off, I just took like a small screwdriver, and there's these little tabs here on the side. Let me see if I can pop this all the way back in here. Okay, I got that on there pretty good. So anyway, what I want to do here in this video is this, okay? And I, I think I have a couple things going on here. So after we replaced the neck in the last video, we had kind of a different kind of picture. It wasn't perfect but you could see that something had changed, okay? And it was kind of rolling, right? And uh, do you guys want to see that real quick? Yeah, maybe, Let, let's hook it up real quick. Okay, so what I did here is I just hooked up the monitor really fast so I can show you guys what it's doing. And you could see we have this kind of like sink issue here and kind of this rolly kind of edge here and then it's just like completely out of whack. And I did some research 
and uh, this could be a B plus issue. I'm not positive, but it could be. And actually, if you guys Google K4600 flowchart, okay? K4600 flowchart, just Google that. The first thing that comes up is this like tech, tech bulletin thing that has a troubleshooting flowchart, okay? Now the guy that makes these flowcharts is kind of really weird about people like publishing links to them and stuff, but anyway, they're out there, you can find them. Um, and, it, and it talked about in the, in the flow chart uh, that if you have this kind of rolly edge here that you could have a B plus issue. So what I want to do real quick here is test the B plus. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So let me turn the game off. And if you look in the manual, okay, so I have the 4600 manual right here, and it shows how to test the B plus, okay? So it's the one, they're calling it the plus 127 volt adjustment, okay? And it's in, there's a control there, variable resistor 501. It's adjusted at the factory. Um, it says operate the monitor for at least 15 minutes, and we're probably fine not to do that. But uh, it says connect a positive lead uh, of your digital multimeter to the blue lead of transistor 502 and then negative lead to chassis ground. Okay, so we're gonna do positive to the blue lead on this transistor and negative to ground, and then we're gonna adjust the variable resistor until we get 127, okay? Now, we're not gonna adjust the voltage right now because I wanna rebuild it first. And I read online that really, uh, if, if, the, uh, if the B plus is really out of whack on this thing, um, there's a bigger problem. It's not a function of just adjusting the pot. And let me show you guys where we're going to test this and how we're going to test it. And, and the B plus, I guess, is like kind of like the power supply uh, of, of the monitor, the B plus power supply. And if that doesn't work, then nothing's going to work. Okay, so we need to hook into the blue lead on the transistor they're talking about. And the transistor they're referring to is actually right here. Okay, it's that guy right there. So let me see if we can turn this. And we want to hook into the blue lead, which is right there, okay? And I'm going to use green for my positive lead, okay? And so we're going to hook up right here onto our blue lead, okay? So let's see. Let me make sure we got it all plugged in right, okay? So you can see our alligator clip right here is hooked onto the blue lead. Can you guys see that? Right. Okay. That's the blue lead on this transistor. Okay. Let's make sure it's not touching anything else. Okay. So there's that. And then we're going to hook up our black lead, our ground, just to the chassis on the monitor. Okay. And I really just want to do this just to see what's going on. And I've read that, um, a lot of times if you have the B plus all whacked like this, doing a cap kit and also reflowing solder typically will fix this, but I just kind of want to see what it's doing before we go any further. And where's my multimeter? Oh, it's back here. All right. Okay, so let's put uh, black on, straight on the frame here. Okay. So we're going to put this on DC volts, like so, and we're going to use, go black to black, and then we used green for our positive. All right, so let's turn the game on, let's, and we're going to let those wires hang down there, just make sure nothing's touching anything. So, all right, let's turn it on and see what we get. Not getting anything. Oh, there we go. Oh, actually, the B plus isn't bad. It's 129, and it's supposed to be 127. Interesting. Yeah, it's supposed to be 127, and right now it's 129. So it's really not off at all, huh? Okay. Well, that's good to know. So what we're gonna do? 
is we're gonna rebuild this because that's what I wanna do. I have a cap kit and we, I wanna reflow all the solder on those little daughter boards and we're gonna go through the whole thing and then we're gonna test the B plus again and adjust it as needed after we rebuild it. But I just kinda wanted to do that to see where it was and really that wasn't too bad because it was supposed to be 127 and it was 129. I was expecting to see like 170 or something, something really high. Huh, interesting. So, okay, so I'm gonna put the monitor on the bench here and let's get to work. Okay, I had the monitor back on the bench here. First things first, um, I'm gonna discharge the monitor. Again, I'm just using my trusty screwdriver with a wire uh, on the actual metal part of the screwdriver. And on the other end, we have an alligator clip. I'm gonna take my alligator clip and put it to the frame. And then I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna discharge the monitor before we go any further. And there we go. And I'm just gonna kinda go like that. Okay, so we're all discharged. And obviously, make sure you're wearing rubber-soled shoes when you're doing that. Don't be standing in a puddle of water. <laughs> okay, so we need to get this chassis off. And again, I've never, I've never had to mess with this, with this board, with this monitor before. So this is not going to be fun. And we're going to be learning together here as we go along. But we need to get the chassis off. And we're going to start re by rebuilding these boards and reflowing the solder. Um, I actually have a cap kit here. This is from Ian Kellogg, and he's selling these on the John's Arcade forums. And he sent me a, a cap kit. Uh, I think his, he's calling his his little business Arcade Lobby. So he actually did a pretty good job here organizing these caps, though. Look at that. It's pretty sweet, right? So each cap has uh, the location name next to it, and, the, and then it's all in this kind of like tape thing here, which is pretty nice. And he also included, uh, very similar to a Bob Roberts presentation here, you know, you know, this is the negative, the short leg, and it's also marked minus. Um, he's got uh, maps showing where all the caps are on the boards. So pretty nice. So this will, this will hopefully make it go nice and smooth. But we have to get that stupid chassis off of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead now and just lean this down on a little boogie board. And we've got four nuts on the bottom here. And as far as I can tell, this is the best way to get this board off of here. If you guys know another way, let me know. But let's take these four screws off. And I have my, I have my soldering iron and my desoldering iron uh, heating up over there. So. This will be the first time we're using the desoldering iron to do a cap kit or really any kind of big job. Okay. So let's get our boogie board out of here. Okay, so here's the chassis itself. Let's remove the neck board. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle this a little bit. If you guys remember in the last video, the uh, socket is cracked here. See that? So I, apparently when they broke the neck board, it snapped off this little plastic piece. But I've been able to just kind of put it on there, put it over it, so it's fine. Um, okay. So let's pull the chassis out here and let's see. Huh. So I think we're going to have to just kind of work on it kind of somewhat in, in, the, uh, in the frame. Um, now these daughter boards, these pop off, so why don't we start by doing those first. So these right here, you, you come in here like so, there's like this little guard thing, and, and we could take that off, and it's just plastic. So let's take this little railing off. Oh, it's got a little zip strip on it. Let me get some uh, side cutters here. Okay, so that's that little guard thing that kind of holds those daughter boards in. Okay, and so we've got this guy right here. And it looks like that's keyed. Can only go on one way. Okay, good. All right, so let's go ahead and just take this one off. Okay, so there's one of the boards right there. And we've got a couple caps on here. 
Okay, so we'll, re we'll reflow all of this solder and also the solder on the chassis where this thing hooks up. So, and then we have another little daughter board right here. And let's kind of get that one off. Okay. This is the board I think that we're, is giving us trouble, by the way. I suspect it's this board that's giving us all the trouble. And then we're going to reflow the solder on here too. So, all right, so we have those two boards off. And then we've got a bunch of caps that are on the main chassis, so that's going to be fun. Um, is there anything I can, dis I can disconnect this? I should take a photo though, because this is, looks like the degaussing wire right here, and it's in the left two. There's three pins here, and looks like go like that. Let me let me just take a quick photo, just in case I need it later. It's always a good idea to take photos while you're working on this stuff. And then we had, what was the other one? I want to take a photo of this because this was like in here, right? Yeah, it was like that. Let's take a photo of that. Just to remind us that that thing goes in that neck board, in that little daughter board. All right, let's disconnect this. Gives us a little more room. And then back here, you can see this. This is the horizontal width coil that's like on the frame. That's kind of really preventing us from getting a lot of movement here. We probably can undo that and then re-solder it back in later. I wonder if I should do that. So there's two wires. One goes to the left, one goes to the right. Mm. I think I want to label those. Hang on a second. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with a Sharpie. I don't know if it matters, but I'm going to take the right wire and just put marker on it. And that's going to be the right. You can see I drew a little R down there. And that way I know that this wire with all the Sharpie on it goes on the right. And I'm just going to take my soldering iron and just kind of yank these wires off, hopefully. There's one. And there's two, OK? So now we can really pull the board out. And we're just going to pretty much leave it like this. Uh, we could remove the flyback, I guess, but there's really no need to. Because we'll just be able to... Okay, I went ahead there and reflowed all the header pins here on these little headers that the daughter cards plug into. So now I'm just gonna kind of, and by the way, we're gonna have to reflow them also on the daughter cards themselves. But we'll do those when we get to those. So right now, I wanna go through here and replace all the capacitors on the main board. And I have Ian's little cap map here. And it looks like there's only like nine of them. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it looks like nine caps. So I'm gonna start here in this, this top right corner right here. This is C610, and we can look right here on Ian's neat little thing here. And C610 is not included in his kit. <laughs> what the? Ian, what's going on here? Is there another? Huh, okay. Well, Ian, it says C610, but you don't seem to include it in your kit. 608, maybe that's a typo. 
I think it is. Yeah, it is. There's no 608. So this is probably 608 right here. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's, it's C608. So there's a typo on his little thing. No big deal. All right, so we're gonna come in here, remove this cap, and uh, we're gonna use our, our new toy. Are you guys excited? <laughs> Because you guys, if you guys remember, we picked up this, the Hacko FR300. And we're gonna try it for the first time in a real world cap kit. Uh, so it's this guy right here. And it looks like it's these two leads right here. Now I'm gonna tell you guys something. Uh, since I tested it, I picked up one of these. We're gonna try this. This is a flux pen, okay? And I think it's a, it's a much neater way of applying flux on a board. And it's funny, actually, when I did my unboxing video on the Hacko uh, FR300 desoldering tool, um, Hacko, uh, they actually retweeted my video and stuff, and they said to me, hey, if you have any questions, just let us know. And some of you guys said that I should be using Flux with this, and I asked them, I said, do I need to use Flux? And they said, no, it's not mandatory, but it will help but it's not required by any means. So I thought though for this, maybe we'll try the flux pen because it seems like a really nice, easy way to apply flux, flux, flux. <laughs> I bought this on Amazon. It was like 10 bucks. All right, so let's come in here and let's see what happens. And and by the way, with this, with this tool, you're not supposed to go all the way down. You're supposed to kind of stay above and just kind of wiggle a little bit, um, which I wasn't really doing when I first did my unboxing, okay? But I really don't want to go all the way down to the board because that's when you lift the traces up, okay? And let's see here. And I'm not applying any new solder. I wonder if I should. Yeah, I think I should apply a little bit of new solder here before we do this. I just think it's going to be a lot easier. And normally when I desolder, I always add new solder. It's just kind of how I roll. It just really helps to to heat up that old solder and mix it up with some new solder. It makes the desoldering that much better. All right, so let's kind of come in here and you guys can see how this works. I, I don't want to really go all the way down because I don't want to lift that trace. All right, as soon as I, I'm just kind of waiting. There, oh yeah, that's perfect. And as soon as I see that solder just kind of melt I'm gonna, I'm not going all the way down here. There we go. There. That worked pretty well there. So this one here, let me see if this is gonna pop out. This one, the leg's a little bent. I could tell that we still have some solder on it. Let's kinda come back in here. I'm trying to be a little extra cautious here because I don't want to lift any traces on this. Okay, so our new cap is out. And this cap that we pulled out is a 47 UF microfarad 160 volt. Okay, and if we look at Ian's little thing here, 608. Oh, actually, it's labeled wrong on the board. It says 610, but it's actually 608. Okay, gotcha. So this is a 47 microfarad 160 volt. And let's see what this is, 47. Yep, and let's pull it out of there. Okay. And you can see the negative lead is the shorter lead on caps and the longer lead is positive. And it's marked on the board. This side is positive, that side's negative. And I probably should have paid closer attention when I removed the old cap. It's also marked on the top too. So positive is this side and negative is that side right there. So there's our new cap. And I'm just gonna kind of bend the legs for now. And then let's kind of come in <clears throat> here. I'm gonna straighten out this one. I'm just gonna kind of come in, add some new solder and straighten it out. Okay, get that leg in, and then let's go ahead and do our next one. 
Okay, so we have our cap end there at C608. So what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to trim the leads off yet either. I'm just going to leave them on here. I like to do that at the end. This way, I, this kind of tells me that I already did that cap and I, because the leads are sticking out. So I usually do that at the very end. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm going to go through now and just replace the, the rest of them on here just like that one. And I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I've done like the first four here. And I wanted to do one with you guys together here because I'm, what I'm discovering is uh, this desoldering tool freaking rules, man, because the caps are just falling off. And what I'm finding out, though, is that the easiest way to do it isn't to use the flux pen at all. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of new solder, okay, to the old, which is what I normally would have done anyway if I was using my solder put. So just add a little bit of new solder, and then I come in with my gun, with my hacko, and... Uh, where was that? That was this one right here. I just kind of come in here and just like that. Just kind of stay up high and then the cap just falls right off. I mean, look at that. Yeah, this thing freaking rules, man. <laughs> so anyway, all right, I'm going to keep going. Okay, guys, I have all the caps replaced on the main board here. And I just went through one by one by one. I, I, I paid attention to the value of the cap I removed. I made sure that the cap that I put back in was the same microfarad value, okay? The voltage can be higher, and it typically is in these cap kits, but the microfarad value needs to be the same. Meaning, if you look at the cap here, so I pulled this one out, and this one says 10 UF, you see that? 10 microfarad, 160 volts, okay? I pulled that one out. Ian's kit, maybe it came with a 10 UF, 250 volts. That's okay, the voltage rating can be higher, but the microfarad value, which is that UF number, needs to be the same when you're replacing it. Okay, so anyway, I have all the caps on the main board replaced. I have not cut off uh, the leads yet because I wanna double check my work. I wanna make sure my polarity is okay, okay? Because we don't want to put them in backwards, and I wanted, and if we did put one in backwards, we want to discover it now, not later, okay? So I'm going to go through each one, and yes, this was kind of a joke on one of my older videos because I went through and I checked the caps, and I kept saying, this one is incorrect, this one is incorrect, this one is incorrect, meaning it was wrong. No, 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 it's in. It's inserted correct. <laughs> so, but anyway, if I look here... I can see that negative is on this side, positive is on that side, okay? So this cap here, negative's right here, negative on the board. So this one is inserted correctly. <laughs> so this one positive over here, negative's over here. This one's inserted correctly. Uh, this one is inserted correctly. Uh, negative's on that side, inserted correctly. Positive's on that side, that one is inserted correctly. Um, I can see that's positive. That one is inserted correctly. Uh, positive should be on this side. That one's good. Uh, negative should be on that side. That one is inserted correctly. And this one right here, positive should be on that side. That one is inserted correctly. So they're all inserted correctly. So we can go ahead now and trim the leads off. And I'm going to get my side cutters here. And... Let's just kind of come in here, and I'm going to cut these. I don't want to cut the solder. I want to cut just above the solder, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and just cut all of those leads down. And, again, just cutting just above the solder. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of these, and I'll be right back. All right, all the leads are cut. And, by the way, I want to show you guys one of the caps I did not use, okay? It says C six, uh, I think three, three or three, two. Uh, it's actually three, two. Uh, it's included in Ian's kit, but it's actually not populated on this board. Okay. So there's different revisions and, and models and versions of these boards from the factory. And this one from the factory did not have a, 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 a cap populated at C six, three, two. So I'm not going to use that cap. Okay. Now, all of the caps that were on the main chassis were 600 numbers, okay? And then we have these 500 numbers right here. 
501, 503, and 551. And I looked, and they're actually on this little daughter board over here. Okay, this is like the power board. So we're going to have to disconnect that board. And, and this is another one of those socketed boards. So I'm going to try to come in here with my screwdriver. And it, there's two screws holding this thing in, and it's also socketed. So I'm going to come in here and just pull these screws off. And it looks like there might be a zip strip, too, holding it down. And this little board has a bunch of caps on it. And that's, this is the board, too, that has the... Uh, the uh, B plus adjustment pot on it. So let's see if we can get this out. There's actually a little zip strip on the back here. So let's go ahead and cut this off. So, so far, you know what? The 4600's not that bad. It's just a little clumsy to work on, but uh, I'm not feeling kind of overwhelmed here or anything. I, I kind of have a handle, I think, on how this is all working. So it's just a weird design with all these little daughter boards because it just introduces all kinds of extra stuff with the sockets and all that. Okay, so let's see if this little board will come off now. I already reflowed the... Uh, There are wires going to this thing? Hang on here. Maybe I can't pull that board off very easily. So there are some wires. No, there's no wires going to eh, is there? Let's see. So I got the board off. Let's see if you guys can see what's going on here. Alright, so here's the little board, and it's just got three caps on it. I've already reflowed the headers uh, on the bottom, and I should also reflow these two. And we've got three caps. It actually looks like two. One and two. So it's 501. Let's look at the little cheat sheet here. So the power PCB, it's 501 and 503, and then 551 has an asterisk in it. And, it, and again, it says on his cheat, now all capacitors will be used depending on your chassis. These will be marked with an asterisk. Um, so 501 and 503 look like the two caps we need to replace on here. And it would have been also 551, which I don't think, no, I have, I have a spot for it, but it's not populated right there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just quickly replace 501 and 503. And I'm totally digging the uh, desoldering iron, guys. It is is awesome. <laughs> it works so incredibly well. I, I can't even tell you how well it works. All right, so 501's right here. This is going to be a little tricky here. All right. So let's kind of come in here and do this together. And it just... It, doesn't take much here. Okay. All right, this one is being a little stubborn here because the legs were bent. And I'm just gonna kinda come in here with my soldering iron. Just kinda break them free like so. Okay, so this is 501. And Okay, so 501 is a 10 microfarad, 160 volts. If you guys can see there, get some focus going here. 10 UF, 10 microfarad, 160 volt. And let's look in Ian's kit here. And 501 is right here. And it's a 10 UF, 10 microfarad, 250. Okay. So you can see the microfarad value is the same, but the voltage value is not. It's higher. So it's a higher rated part. That's fine. But the microfarad value needs to be the same. 10 UF, 250 volts. All right, so let's go ahead and put this guy in. Just like so. 
going to have to kind of hold this. It's going to want to fall out. So let me go ahead and just put some. I'm just going to kind of come in here and just tack one side of it. Okay. All right, so that one is in there. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the other cap on this board, which is 503, which is right there. So I'll go ahead and do that and come right back. Okay, I have the two caps on this little power board here. And I'm going to spray a little bit of this deoxid stuff. I actually just bought this stuff to use for my computer space. And I, I heard great stuff about this stuff as far as cleaning contacts. And I'm just going to spray a little bit in here. Why not? And just let it evaporate. And it's just like a little contact cleaner. And I'm going to go ahead and just spray some in each hole. And I'm going to let this sit for a good five minutes now and just let it all evaporate. And then we'll put it back together. So I'll be right back. So it's all dry. I'm going to go ahead now and just put this guy back in here and just carefully plug this into the socket. And there we go. And we're in. And I'll go ahead and throw those screws back in there. And we're pretty much now done with the main PCB. So now we need to do those little daughter boards. Which I don't think is going to be too bad. I hope. And then we're almost done. And then cross all of our fingers, guys, that we actually fix this. Because I have no idea <laughs> what's going to happen. I think the odds are somewhat in our favor. Who knows? We'll find out. And if it doesn't fix it, well, we'll, we'll just figure out what's going on. Let me get a hand screwdriver here. Okay, so we're done. All right, so that's it for the main PCB. So let's move on to the little, the little daughter boards that plug into it. And let's kind of just put this to the side now. Okay, so let's do this board first, okay? And this is the interface PCB. And this one only has two caps, uh, C201 and 202. Um, it does say on Ian's kit that sometimes 202 will not be populated. It, it is populated in mine, though. So we've got these two caps right here. Um, I also want to reflow all of these header pins, okay, and especially these ones right here. And we'll probably clean these, too, with a little bit of that deoxid because um, this is what plugs into the main PCB. So let me go ahead, and we'll just do this cap here together. Now, this board... Uh, positive and negative is not labeled on the bottom, so we need to be careful here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to take my Sharpie just to be safe, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and and put negative right there, and then put negative over here, just so we don't have to worry about it too much. I'll do the same on the bottom too, just to be safe. And it looks like it's. Yeah, so this board's not labeled at all, so we got to be super careful here. All right, so let's go ahead here, and let's get that cap first. And we'll just do this one together, and I'll do the other one alone. So I'm going to come in and just kind of add some new solder. Okay, and we'll 
come in with our handy dandy tool here. Alright, so there's our cap. And this one here is a uh, 1000 UF and says 16 volts DC, okay? And Ian's kit comes with a 1000 microfarad, 50 volts. I know I always say UF, but that's what it looks like to me, so I just <laughs> I say it like that. Yes, I know, it's supposed to be saying microfarad. All right, so let's compare again. 1000 UF, 1000 microfarad, and original was 16 volts, this one is 50, so it is an upgrade. And we labeled our negative on this side, just like so. So that's a big, chunky cap compared to the original. So let's come in here and just hit this with some solder. Straighten out this leg. Don't like how that's going on there. Okay. And I kind of melted my little pot there oh well okay so we've got that guy in I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then I'll be right back okay guys I have uh, replaced both those caps so I'm gonna go ahead and trim the leads off of them and I double check my work negative negative this one's in a little crooked huh So let's kind of come in here and just trim these guys. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to reflow the solder on these on these headers right here, and then also these leads here, which go to these little little sockets that plug into the main PCB. So I'm just going to go through this really quick and just freshen up all of this solder. just to be safe. These actually don't look bad at all, but I'm gonna do it anyway since we got it out. Okay, and I'll do these headers, and then I'll do those, and I'll be right back. Okay, I reflowed all the headers here, also these ones here that connect to these little connectors that go onto the uh, onto the chassis, and I'm going to also hit these with a little bit of the deoxid. I figure this can't hurt. Okay, so now we have one board left to do, and that is the XY PCB, which is this guy right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and replace these caps, no different than we've done all the other ones. It looks like we've got about, uh, about 10 caps or so, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, about 10 or so. So I'm going to go ahead and replace all 10 of these, and then also reflow this solder in here and in here and we'll clean these guys up with a little bit of deoxit and I'll just freshen up any little solder joints that I feel look suspect uh, overall it doesn't look too bad but I'm just gonna go ahead here and probably touch up a bunch of this stuff so okay I'm gonna go ahead now and replace all of these capacitors okay the XY board is all done I uh, replaced all the capacitors I double checked my work okay I took a black marker and marked all of them to make sure that the positive was in the positive, the negative was in the negative. I came on the back here, I reflowed all of these headers 
these pins. It wasn't really necessary. They looked actually pretty good. And I sprayed a little bit of that deoxid in here. So I'm now ready to start putting this thing back together. I've already started actually. You can see back here, I just, I just soldered uh, those two wires for the horizontal coil there. And those are on. That was actually a little tricky to get on there. And I have the degauze uh, coil wires plugged in here. And we're pretty much ready now to just start plugging this all back together. Uh, I think what I want to do now is put the daughter boards back in and put that little clip in there before we push this all the way back. And so this guy here, I believe, goes right here. And you can only put these in one way. So we're going to just come in here and put them in the socket, the little uh, headers. And it just plugs in. Is this the right one? No, nope, this one goes here. There we go. Okay, so that one's in. And let's get the other PCB here. And let's plug this guy in. <sighs> I'm I'm getting a little a little excited here. Uh, we're about to we're about to plug this in, and, and I really I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, please, please fix. Please be fixed. All right, so let's come in here with this thing. Okay, so that's all back together. So really we have to plug in this guy, which goes in back here. Okay, and then the neck board's gonna go on. We're gonna have to clean up these wires because I, I undid a lot of the little uh, zip strips. We're gonna have to put them all back on. But let's make sure it's working first. And this goes here. Okay. Yeah, let's put her neck board back on. Okay. All right, so I think that's about it. We got to put the anode back on. We got to screw this thing back to the uh, frame, which I'm going to do right now. That's really it. So let's let me get my little boogie board here, and then I'll screw that down, and then we'll put the anode on, and then check it in the back of the game. Okay, I had the thing all screwed to the uh, to the frame. I'm gonna come in now and put the anode on, and I'm just gonna just make sure there's no charge in the tube still. I'm just gonna come in with my little discharging tool, and there was a little bit of a snap there. So let's put the anode in. Okay. Well, guys, this is it. <laughs> the moment of truth. Did we fix it? Oh, man. Let's just kind of quickly double check our work here, though. Make sure everything's plugged in. There's no loose wires. I don't want any surprises here. And that's that. That goes there. These are in. That's in. Okay. All right, so let's bring this back to the game. And let's cross every finger we have. Cuz uh I would like to be done. All right, so let's me bring the monitor over here. So we're going to plug it in, and let's see what happens. So the cabinet is, the game's off, so let's plug in our power. And let's plug in our video. All right, guys, this is it. Make sure these daughter cards are all down all the way. <sighs> okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Please be fixed. It's warming up. Ah, it's still rolling. It's exactly the same as it was before. No change. Son of a gun. I wonder if I should try another one of these boards. Because I think my problem... Nice burning smell right now. I think the problem is on this one board. What did that do? Hmm. What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? So you guys can see... It's just a bunch of garbage. <sighs> Something's happening though. All right, let me think about what we're gonna do next because this, I don't really have a course action right now. Because we have the same exact problem after we capped it, nothing has changed. And we reflowed all of that solder and everything. All right, let me look into this. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I actually just went on Google <laughs> and like searched like 46 K4600 scrambled screen. I actually came across an article on Bob Roberts' website talking about an adjustment on the 4600 monitor that I was overlooking. And there is a, uh, a pot, I think it's a horizontal frequency pot. And as you guys can see, yes, yes, it's, look at the picture. <laughs> so there is a, a pot on the board down here and I have my little with coil, uh, my little plastic screwdriver in it right now. If you guys can see there's a little pot in there and there's actually a hole. I gotta be careful here, the monitor's on. There's a hole right here, okay where you could put a plastic screwdriver through this hole, okay? And then it's gonna make contact with a pot in that little metal box in there. And so I turned that and bam, we got sync. And uh, it works. Uh, I'm gonna tell you this though, this monitor is not good. This is a junk monitor. I, I don't know, I, I, I'm guessing the tube is not very good. Um, it's filthy, we gotta clean it, but um, I can't really get it to focus very well. This is the focus knob right here. And so when I adjust this, it just it doesn't really want to focus at all. So we could try rejuving this. Uh, we could try a tube swap actually, because I have another uh, uh, a uh, 4600 on the shelf that looks like it has a pretty decent tube with not a lot of burn. So we could try a different tube. We could try doing a rejuve. Um, but really, this, this monitor is unacceptable. This is a bad tube. Uh, we got the chassis working, though. That's exciting. So what do you guys want to do? Um, I think what I want to do, actually, is I want to put the monitor back in the game. And let's just play a little jump bug, because I, I want to play jump bug. And then we'll, we'll address the other stuff later, because, you know, if, if, we, if we do a tube swap or a rejuve, we'll do that in another video. Uh, but... Hey, we got it working, man. I, I have to say I'm pretty damn happy right now. So let me get the monitor back in the game, and let's check it out. Let's play some jump bug. You guys want to play? I want to play. All right. <laughs> okay, guys, I have the monitor back in the game here. I actually took a little bit of time and adjusted the monitor, too. It's actually not that bad. It's, I actually got it looking kind of good. Um, one thing was it was too bright. The, the screen was just too bright. And there is a screen control that's on the neck board back here, okay? Normally, you find that on the flyback, but on this monitor, the 4600, the screen control is right here. On the flyback, only we only have the focus, okay? Now, adjusting the screen didn't make the screen black enough for me, okay? It, I could turn it down, but it still was too bright. So down here on this board, there is a little pot in the back. Can you guys see that? And that's the black level control. And that's really how you should adjust 
the brightness kind of on this monitor, and it's right there in a really bad spot. I actually turned the game off uh, to adjust it because I, I just didn't trust myself to put my hand in there. So I don't really see any other way to adjust that while the game is on without really touching stuff. So anyway, yeah, it's looking okay. You know, it's not perfect. It's not amazing, but it's good enough right now. And I, I might rejuve this tube. We'll see. But honestly, it's not bad. So why don't we play a game? You guys want to see what Jump Bug's all about? I'm going to turn the lights off in here. Uh, it's kind of a quirky little weird game. Um, so we have a eight-way joystick, okay? Right here, and this is a Wicko. And this thing is really loose. I think it needs a new grommet. I think I have a, a spare grommet too. We'll see. But it has an eight-way joystick and then a fire button. And that's it. And then a one and two players start. So let's go ahead and try this game. It's actually a really neat game. Uh, there's a lot to this game, actually, too. Look at all the different levels. You have city, plain, volcanoes, a pyramid, volcano, sea, sky, and finish. So there's many, many, many different levels, and I don't know if we're going to get through all of them right now, but it, let's see. Let me go ahead and coin up. Okay, it says push one player button. Hmm. There it goes. That button might be a little wonky. Alright, so we're this little Volkswagen bug here, and this is the first level, and we're just trying to get the money here. And I'm just using the joystick going up and down, and I also have a fire button so I can shoot things. And I'm just kind of jumping from money to money to money to money and then trying to avoid stuff. Ah, like that little Joker dude just killed me. <laughs> I know, this game is weird, right? It, it doesn't really seem like a very legit game, does it? <laughs> That's why I like it, I think, because it is weird. So I'm just trying not to hit this stuff. And once you... You can only jump off of stuff. Like, if you can't go back up in mid-air, you have to go all the way down and land on something and then go back up. Oh, I guess you can't hit that rock. Shit. Ah. <laughs> So what do you think? Weird game, right? <laughs> Whatever. Ah, uh, well, we got it working. Hey, that's pretty good. That's good news. You want to try it again? Want to play one more time? Why not? That button's a little wonky. We'll have to clean up the control panel and stuff. I'm pretty jazzed that this is working, though. from building to building here, collecting the money. Alright, so now we're like in the second area. Still with that Joker thing means. Shit. Skull got me. I know someone at home right now is sitting there going, that game looks so stupid. <laughs> it does. I guess why I like it, because it's just so weird. Volcanoes. This is bad. Alright. I want to at least get to the cavern area because it's hard. It's diamond. Diamonds. Diamonds are good. 
I don't know what just happened there. All right, now we're going like into the into the cavern area. This is where it gets kind of cool. Now we're going down. Ah! Oh. <laughs> it's cool, right? I mean, come on. Now we gotta figure out how, how the hell to get the hell out of here. I don't know what's happening right now. Skeleton just killed me. Alright, we gotta get out of here now. Where do I go? So it looks like once you jump on the money... Now we gotta get out. We're gonna go up. Ah, so you can't go back on the money after you land on it because it turns into the skulls. Anyway, you guys get the idea. What do you think? <laughs> Was it worth all the effort? I gotta tell you, I I'm pretty jazzed because I felt pretty defeated earlier today. When, when, after we did that cap kit and when we plugged it in, I really felt defeated. I'm like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, it was a simple adjustment, really, and it's funny because that's probably all that was wrong with the monitor in the beginning. Because in the beginning, after we, we replaced the neck board, we were getting that same rolling screen, and it was that same horizontal frequency thing. So, whatever. We needed to do the cap kit anyway. Um, so we did it, and the monitor, yeah, it looks okay. I'm going to spend a little more time adjusting it. I, I might rejuve it. Maybe we'll do that in the next video. I'm not sure. Uh, we got to clean this game up really, really well. Uh, we have a lot to do, really. The sides are just bad. So I need to look for some kind of white, vertical-grade laminate. I think that's what I want to do. I want to sand the sides smooth and then put some white laminate on that. And then we'll, we're going to spray paint all the blue, which is what they did originally. Um, very much like my buddy Sean did, uh, Fetish Boy, with his jump bug restoration. So, anyway, we, we, uh, we got past a major hurdle today. The game is now working, uh, which makes me very happy, because I can now, now I can play it in the garage. So I don't know what we're going to do next in the next Restore video. We really need to get going on that Quantum, because Quantum is a high priority for me. Um, I really want that in the basement. So, anyway... Okay, that's going to do it for the jump bug uh, for this video, and uh, why don't we go back down in the basement, do some viewer mail, hang out for a little bit longer. You guys want to hang out still? All right, let's go back down to the basement. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. It's working. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, uh, there you have it. That was part number four of the jump bug restoration, and my God, I'm, I'm a happy guy right now. I, I have to tell you. Being able to play that game in the garage right now makes me all kinds of happy. <laughs> so, I am so relieved that we got that monitor working. It's not perfect though, you know, the colors, it's not bad though. You know, I, I think if I tweak it a little bit more, I think I can be pretty happy with that actually. Uh, I might rejuve it too, we'll see. We might do that in the next video, I I'm not sure, but it's pretty close. It's a lot better than it was initially. At first I was like, oh my god, this thing's garbage. But after playing with it just a little bit, I have to say the picture is actually not bad at all. So anyway, there you have it. I, I'm very happy that that thing's working. Honestly, I, I'm besides myself because I was freaking out thinking that we weren't going to be able to fix it because I've never worked on that monitor before. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know what to do now. And it was just that stupid little pot. Anyway, all right, so I want to do some viewer mail. And by the way, if you guys want to participate in the viewer mail, you got to email them. You're going to email them to me at blkdog, the number seven, that's blackdog7 at gmail.com, blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put viewer mail. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Uh, this one is from Johnny. It says, hello, John. I am new to the hobby. I know you constantly hear this, but you and your videos have been an inspiration to me. You got me into this hobby. Thanks, Johnny. I have a Neo Geo MVS 6 slot in the garage, and it is huge. It's my only working game. Here's my question. Can I even hook up a JPAC to an MVS 6 slot? I want to hook up a computer with MAME. Do I need a JAMA PCB to MVS cabinet adapter for the JPAC? I know the sound of JAMA is slightly different on the Neo Geo harness. I got the video part figured out with the 15K VGA. 
The sound is a different story. I want the speakers and headphone jacks to work on the cabinet to work. The exporting sound from the computer is giving me trouble. I've been thinking about housing this all under the control panel with a 2-in-1 JAMA switcher, so I switch between MAME and Neo Geo. Anyways, any help would be appreciated, Johnny. Uh, he also says, see you at BroFest 2015. Uh, he's driving 17 hours from Canada. And yes, by the way, we're having BroFest at Fun Spot. That's May 29th and 30th. Uh, Greg from Arcade Impossible is going to be there. Uh, Sean from Arcade Outsiders. Of course, myself. My buddy Matt McCarthy from the Kill Screens is going to be there. We're having a tournament at Fun Spot the 29th and the 30th. So hopefully you guys can make it. But anyway, all right, so let me try to help you the best I can with your question because you want to install a JPack into your Neo Geo. And as you found out, uh, Neo Geo is not really MAME. Uh, it's, it's, it's a totally different flavor of, uh, 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 I'm sorry, of JAMA. It's not JAMA. It, it's a totally different flavor of JAMA. And they actually make an adapter uh, that you can get at uh, JAMAboards.com. And it's the JAMA PCB to Neo Geo MVS cabinet adapter. And really, you, you're going to have to get that. If you want to plug a JPack in, you're going to have to get an adapter like this. Uh, it says here it adapts a standard JAMA single speaker audio for the MVS cabinet dual speaker, provides proper and complete audio isolation between the JAMA PCB and the Neo Geo cabinet, corrects the test switch position so the Neo's cabinet's test switches will function properly with the JAMA, available two-channel audio input allows stereo producing JAMA PCBs to utilize the Neo Geo's uh, dual speakers, optional test service configuration, simple design, mounting holes, blah blah blah. So. You should get that adapter. I think you should get this adapter and then plug your JPack into that and then plug that into your Neo Geo. And uh, that should kind of do what you want to do if you want to plug a, a main computer into your Neo Geo without hacking up the, uh, the original harness. Now, you said sound is a different story. He wants the speakers and headphone jacks to work on the cabinet. So the JPack is going to route the audio, but you have to give it amplified audio okay so what i did on my main cabinet upstairs the the pac-man i hacked a, a pc computer speakers and i ran those wires i didn't use the actual speakers themselves that I, I took some self-powered pc speakers okay and it was you know left and right okay and the left one had the audio amp built into it with a with a uh, you know volume knob, right? And then the right speaker was like a dummy speaker that just had two wires going to it. And what I did was I cut the wires going to the dummies to the to, to speak the speaker without the power amp, and I ran those wires to the J pack, and then I used the other speaker as the amplifier. And then I went into Windows. It's kind of kludgy, but it worked. I went into Windows and I panned all of the audio to the right. Because MAME, for the most part, is mono, right? So I panned all the audio to the right so the left powered speaker wasn't being used and it was sending all the audio amplified. Is this making sense? It's, it was to the to this wires that went to the JPack. That's what I did. And that was just kind of a cheap, down and dirty way to, to kind of create a, an audio amp. Now, I don't know about putting a two-in-one JAMA switcher in there, though, to switch Neo Geo to the MAME because that 2-in-1 JAMA switcher is not really going to jive or sync up with the Neo Geo default harness. So I'm not sure about that. Do you have to get another adapter that's like, because uh, you, you get the one adapter that's JAMA to Neo Geo, do you also need to get a Neo Geo to JAMA adapter and then use all that stuff hooked up to the 2-in-1 JAMA switcher? I don't know, man. I, I'm not really positive about that, but I, I do think that if you got this, at least, you could hook up the PC and then you could do the MAME stuff in there. But I'm not positive about the about the, the, the switching. Maybe someone knows and can make a comment and help him out. So, And I hope to see you at BroFest, bro. bro. <laughs> All right, so the next one here is from Damien. Uh, he says, hey, John, my son and I love your show. I'm having an issue with my original upright Pac-Man. I bought it complete for 50 bucks at a yard sale. I plugged it in. I get a buzz sound and a blue screen. I watched your Pac-Man Cabaret episode backward and forwards and replaced the edge connector and fuse blocks. All new fuses are in. I plugged it back in and I have the same result. Do you have any idea what can be the issue? The neck board on the monitor is cracked and has jumper wires fixing it. Can, can it be this or can I just have a bad board altogether? I'm dying to hear that waka. P.S. You are the reason I am in this hobby. Thank you for all the work you do. Well, thanks, Damien. So he sent me a photo of his Pac-Man. There it is. 
got your typical handware. You know, for 50 bucks, man, you're ahead of the game. I mean, the PCB is, is 100 bucks, really. So you're doing all right. So, but, okay, but Damien, you, you didn't tell me, did, did you check the voltages? You got to do that first. You, you got to figure out if this thing is supplying, if it has the proper voltages. It has five volts. Because the Pac-Man PCB actually has the power supply built into it. Okay, this up here. Also, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a, the filter board installed? Because there was a, a filter board that came from the factory that was between the PCB and the harness. And if you have that, you got to get rid of that right away. Just remove that filter board. It's between the board and the harness. It's, there's a little board in between. You don't need that. They installed that back in the day because people were afraid these games were going to interfere with radios and stuff. So make sure that board is gone. And then I need you to make sure you have the voltages. You need to get a multimeter. You need to check your voltages. You got to make sure. And they, they sell a power supply rebuild kit for this. Bob Roberts has it. You can rebuild the power supply section on the Pac-Man PCB. But really, you got to you gotta make sure you have good voltages before we can have any other conversation. You know, you're asking if the neck board and the monitor could be the problem. Well, is the game playing? blind um, it sounds like someone fixed it just like you know we had the cracked neck board in the garage I could have attempted to fix that you know but with jumper wires which people do all the time but I, I didn't have to do that because I had another board on hand but I'm guessing that whoever did that probably did successfully fix it and if you're not hearing the game playing blind you know meaning if you you said the screen is like white, so can you hear the game noises? Can you coin up? Can you start a game? Sounds like you can't. So I think you need to check your voltages. Do that and then let me know what happens. All right, the next one here is from Mike Firmstone. It says, hey John, my name is Mike and I stumbled upon your videos and I must admit that I binge watched every Journey Restore video plus many others. Since watching your videos and being a huge gaming nerd, I also would like to start a vast collection of arcade games. I was wondering if you could answer me a few questions. Alright, I get these questions all the time and I've addressed them many times here on Viewer Mail, but we're going to do it again, okay? Where should I look for arcade games? Which games are good for a beginner? Should I run a, <coughs> should I run a new and dedicated electric service just for games? <coughs> Excuse me. And lastly, how come you never have any popcorn made in your basement? Thanks for taking the time to read this and keep up the great videos. Coin up, Mike Firmstone. All right, Mike. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go through your questions here. Uh, all right. So where uh, he he wants to start a collection? Okay. So where should he look for arcade games? Well. Again, we've covered this many times, okay? So, the first thing you want to do is meet people locally to you. I, I say that a lot, but really, that's how you're going to get the good deals. That's how you're not going to have to work so hard to get these games. you got to make friends in this hobby, okay? A great place to start if you're in the U.S. is Klov, K-L-O-V.com, okay? You can reach out to people there, see who's in your area, meet up with them, see their collection. They might have junk cabinets in the garage. You know, they might say, hey, you know, I got a collection of games. Come over and check it out. And they'll say, hey, you know, I got this project game. Would you be interested in it? You know, stuff like that. Okay, you got to meet people though. Okay, now if you're not willing to meet people, well, then you got to go on Craigslist. You got to kind of make it your job. Okay, and you have to look on Craigslist like every, like every five minutes, every 10 minutes. You need to get an app. You need to get, uh, like on Chrome, I have an alert that, that pops up every time something matches my search terms. If you go to the John's Arcade forums, I actually have my Craigslist search term there. Okay, it's listed in the forum. Uh, it's, I think it's in the General Arcade forum. I, it's the exact term that I use to search on Craigslist all the time. Okay, plug that into Craigslist, get a notifier in Chrome that pops up every time something matches. But you gotta make it your job. You have to, to be looking for these games all the time, okay? In the beginning, when I started in this hobby, that's what I was doing. I was meeting people, I was making friends, and I was on Craigslist every five minutes. And if there was a deal, this is the most important part, if a deal shows up on Craigslist, you email the guy, you don't be wishy-washy, you don't ask questions, you just say, I will be there tonight at five o'clock, I have a truck, I have a dolly, I, I can, you know, I'll, I'll be there to pick up the game. Just don't say anything. Just say, I'll come. I'm coming to get it. Tell me one. Give me your address. You got to do stuff like that. You got to be kind of aggressive because if you don't do that, the other guy, even though the other guy maybe didn't email the guy first, but his email is a lot more, you know, resistant to the guy. You know, there's less for him to think about. 
you know, he's going to respond to that guy. So just when you email people on Craigslist, just don't be wishy-washy. Just don't ask a lot of questions. If it's a killer deal and your gut says that this is a good deal, then you need to go for it. You need to get in the car and go to that guy's house. I mean, don't ask questions. I mean that. Because <laughs> if, you, if you ask like 20 questions or say, can you send me more pictures? And then the next guy that emails him on Craigslist says, hey, I'll take the game. Give me your address. He's going to respond to that guy, not you. So anyway, so yes, meet people and Craigslist and eBay. You can get lucky on eBay. I, I've purchased games on eBay. I bought uh, my Mario Brothers on eBay. I, is that the only game I got on eBay? I think it is actually. Yeah, I think it is. Mario Brothers. But oh, I got the Whirlwind. That was actually on eBay, and I made a deal with the guy outside of eBay, but I found it on eBay. So eBay, you know, and it is also a good resource, but it's hit or miss there because the prices kind of go up, 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 up. Uh, he also says, uh, should he? Uh, which games are good for beginners? Well, I tell you, the Nintendo stuff is pretty reliable. It really is. Once you get that stuff working, it's it's pretty pretty. Pretty much very reliable. You know, you're still gonna have to deal with cap kits and power supplies, but once that stuff's running, it seems to last. You know, I, I've had very little trouble with my Nintendo stuff. Uh, so Nintendos are good, Ataris are good, a JAMA cabinet is good because you can swap boards out. Um, some of the newer games are a little easier to deal with because they use a more modern switching power supply, but a lot of the old games now have adapters, so. There's really no good answer there, but I think Nintendos are, are very reliable, and I think the cabinets, are, if they're made out of plywood, tend to be not so hard to work on, and they're very light machines, too. He wants to know if he should run a new and dedicated electric service for the games. Well, that's up to you and, and how many games you ha you're gonna, you plan on getting. You know, If you're going to put 30 games in your basement, you're probably going to want to run new, new, new electric. I, I did down here. I have four 20-amp circuits, and you can get about eight to nine games safely on a 20 amp circuit. Um, but if you're just gonna have a couple games, you don't you don't need to run dedicated. Th these games don't really draw that much power, honestly. They draw like a, a, one, and a half, one amp or something like that. One, one to one and a half amp. Like upstairs, I have two games just plugged into the wall. You know, I have a Miss Pac-Man and the Centipede. There's no special electricity for that. It's just like running a TV and a computer. You know, it's it's a television set with a with a power supply. You know, it's it's really like an old computer that you're running. So, it, but but if you have like 30 of them, well then that's a different story. You know, you need to you need to plan ahead then, or or think differently. So, so Mike, I hope that answers your question. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it. Took me a long time to make this video. I have to tell you, uh, I started working on the jump bug today around around 2 o'clock, and it's like 8.30, man. Ugh, it took me forever to rebuild that monitor. I do want to thank Ian Kellogg, though, for the cap kit. Ian, uh, your cap kit worked out great. Um, the organization in that little strip, I have to say that that's a very novel idea, and I like it. I like it a lot. So thanks, Ian. And uh, so if you guys want to, you know, uh, if you want to pick up some cap kits for Ian, from Ian, go to the John's Arcade forums at johnsarcade.com slash forum. And also, if you've never joined the forum, you should, because that is a great place to meet people. And there's a little bit of swapping going on for sales stuff. Uh, not not like Clove, but a little bit. So if you're afraid to join Clove, maybe join the John's Arcade forum and see. Maybe you'll get lucky and there's be, be some local guys there, you know. But Ian, thanks again for the cap kit. And, and if you guys want to buy Ian's cap kits, go down to John's Arcade for and look him up. I think he only charges like five bucks for those cap kits. Really cheap. He also sent me a 20EZ cap kit that we're going to be doing soon. Um, but yeah, it, it was. Uh, it took me forever today. But uh, that, uh, that desoldering iron, that thing was money, man. I feel like I really have a good grasp on how to use that. Um, I was adding solder, basically. Uh, and, and then whoop, and then just sucking it right up. I, I didn't really feel the need at all to add any flux. I was just adding a little new solder to every one of the joints, and I come in with the, with the hacko, and, and it would just, like, literally within a half a second, it was clean. So that thing is, that thing's a lifesaver, man. I, I don't know how I ever live without it, so. Anyway, that's it. I think we're done. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. Do both of those podcasts live on allgames.com Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, you can find them on iTunes and Stitcher. It's Video Game Outsiders and Arcade Outsiders. So, All right, guys, that's going to be it uh, for this video. I'll see you guys in a couple days, though. I plan on releasing a, another video real soon here. So, All right, guys, tell your friends, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. 
later and bye. <laughs>